Hi, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm a journalist, author, interviewer, and broadcaster who's interviewed roughly 1,400 celebrities over a 30-year period for nearly all major media outlets in Ireland and many abroad. And here, let me say yes. There were many moments during interviews when I nearly said aloud, good God, can this really be happening? Maybe I would have had it not been uncool to do so. But there sure were times when I was sitting, say, with someone whose music or writing or movies had been central to my life when I wanted to say such a thing. That certainly nearly happened in 1995 when I was on a movie set interviewing Dennis Hopper. I am of that generation who first encountered the man in the culture-shuddering movie Easy Rider in 1969. It even made me throw away my watch which I must try and recover one of these days. More seriously, I also was hugely influenced, as many a misfit was, by a similarly seminal movie from earlier in Hopper's career, namely Rebel Without a Cause, starring, of course, James Dean. So what follows in this part of my series of short podcasts, which I call singles, because they usually last less than five minutes, is the point of the interview at which Hopper and I discuss that movie and James Dean and had a joint. I'm joking, maybe. By the way, if you want to read the article I wrote out of this chat with Dennis Hopper, check out my website, joejacksoninterviewer.com. Either way, enjoy. Well, my, my beginning, my first workings were with uh, Nick, Ray. Nick, Nick Ray and George Stevens, both within a year's time. Very different. Absolutely. But very, Directors. very... Uh, uh, George Stevens was one of our greatest directors, right. and Nick Ray was certainly prime. You know, and he was like uh, he was a very valid guy. And to see the difference of that between one movie to the next right. was an amazing world. I mean, at the time I did Giant, Giant was the most expensive movie that ever been made. Okay. And yeah. Rebel Without a Cause was just sort of a little small cheapy oh, yeah. picture. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Do you look at any of the? I read a recent uh, uh, study of, of Rebel, which said that despite its claims to be the first rock and roll movie in that sense, in terms of attitude mm -hmm. and striking against the establishment, that if you look at it again, it really is very conservative. That at the end, it kind of serves the state. He goes back to the family, the mother and father take him back, mm -hmm. and that at the end, it's kind of subverted to a degree. Mm -hmm. And that it's not true, maybe. What was the guy? Some guy wrote a, a psychological report, John Linder, or Robert Linder wrote the oh, original, oh, the original you know, which yeah, was, uh, yeah, where it was supposed to be a psychotic, yeah, yeah, and he was supposed to be a disobeyer oh, yeah. of every code. Yeah, yeah. So is that where kind of Hollywood moves into neutralize subversion? You know what yeah. I mean? Even way back then, yeah. and it does end up with the you know the daddy's jacket going around the boy and, and everything. They walk off into the sunset. Yeah, you, you know would that you was the period of time when they were still trying to make morals. They were like trying to make morals oh, right, for society. Right. I mean, like they were, they had their moral code. Yeah, right. That you only do this in movies and that in movies. I remember when I went into contract to Warner Brothers, the the big when I was 18 years old to do Rebel Without a Cause yeah. and Giant, the big sign outside said, "Welcome to Warner Brothers. We're, welcome to Burbank, home of Warner Brothers, combining good citizenship with good picture making." All right. Okay. Now this was right. prevalent everywhere. This was after the McCarthy hearing, and now it's a rosy American. All it's right. picket fences. Right. It's in right. little white houses with picket fences, and All this right. is, uh, you know, All right. All right. it's the 50s. Okay. And it's okay. Eisenhower, and it's yeah. like, come on now, yeah. you know, get it, you're straight, good, blah, 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 blah. But did Nick this Ray is... have to go along with that, or would he have had, like, I have read that there were certain words had to be dropped from the script, like punk, because it could have suggested that Plato and Dean were having a homosexual fling. But this kind of impositions were really like the state saying and you can. Probably you know what I mean? That, uh, yeah. What's his name? Wrote. Ah, oh, um, this guy, not that guy recently. That book recently. The, the, the guy that, who wrote uh, Hollywood <laughs> Babylon. Oh, Kenneth Ange. <laughs> <Kennedy. laughs> I mean, come on, man. I'm not he is his so book. crazy. No, not he's his book. crazy. No, that's not. It wasn't him. James Dean, the human ash tray. That's the line. That's, that's the line. Break. Yeah, I know. Give no, no. The more recent also book was, the uh, just what we're talking about this, okay? Every biographer of James Dean has been a homosexual. Like okay. Paul, Paul Alexander, the latest one I read. Is he a homosexual also? Yeah, he called you a fraud. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay, good. Right. Well, excellent. Because that's easy. <laughs> I'm so tired of hearing about James Dean being a homosexual. I mean, like, James Dean has been a homosexual. He'd been doing it in the middle of the street. You know? when The whole t the whole year that I saw him, he was madly in love with two women. 
Uh, one was Ursula Andres and the other was Pierre Angeli. Right. And he right. was obsessed by them. And he had a lot of gay friends. And who doesn't have gay friends right. in this business? Right. Right. But, I mean, it was like, you know. I mean, did, you, did you read this Paul Alexander book? No, you got to really just throw it out the window. Because he just says at that time he was really in love with Jack Simmons, Jack Simmons. Jack and that, that's Simmons just how many I was based on. Can I tell you something? Jack Simmons was... I'm just reporting what I read. Jack Simmons was sort of wonderful little faggot. He was very funny. The idea of having sex with, 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 with Jack Simmons is like... It's like, I mean, it's so, I mean, I can't, I don't even know where to begin okay. to tell right. you. I mean, if he was going okay. to, believe me, that would not we'll be, be the place. It would not be the place. He was funny. He was delightful. All he right, was like a right, funny little right. guy who was like, you know, wait, see, what this guy was really feminine and really, and oh, really right. like, not his kind of man. Well, well they're, they're saying that Plato, you know, Minio is based on Jack. Minio was yeah. a homosexual. Oh, we know, yeah, he's a that, but not at that himself. time. All right, right, so it was too You've got to understand, now. he's in school with Natalie Wood. Nobody gets the dimensions of any of this. All right, the picture of any of this. All right. I mean, right. Natalie Wood is 14 years old, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. many was like yeah. 15 yeah. or something. They're yeah. in school all day. They're not even hanging out on the set. All right. So, like, you know, yes, you I mean, Natalie set was very concept. active. It, but Sal Minio didn't know whether he was gay or anything. He didn't right. know anything. Right. I mean, he was like a very young guy. Well, he did say when he looks at the looks at the movie in '78, you know, it's 25th anniversary or something, that he sees it as a kind of secret love story between himself and Jimmy. And maybe that's his fantasy. Who says that? Minio. Minio's dead. No, he said that in '78, oh. at the 20th, 25th anniversary of it, right? That's because he's, <laughs> that's because he wanted to. <laughs> no, is that true though that most of the biographies of Dean have up that ante because that's where they're coming from? They're, they're absolutely. Yeah, they absolutely. Want, they want to reappropriate. The guy that like the guy that wrote the first one was the guy that, that was in uh, at UCLA with Jim. All right, all right. You know, all right. Gay. All right. He came on the show. Do you think it's such a big issue if he was or wasn't though? Well, why, why make somebody something they weren't? Okay. Why, right. like, why push your trip on somebody when that wasn't their trip? Right. I mean, if yeah, Jimmy yeah. ever did something, he may have turned a couple of tricks in New York when he was a starving actor yeah. or something. I don't yeah. know about that. Well, that's what but, Alexander I mean, claims that. But I don't know. But, yeah. you know, how does he know that either if yeah. I don't know? It? Well, I'll tell you, you what's sick about, 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 so about the book is he quotes verbatim like conversations Dean had with lovers in small bedrooms where obviously nobody else could be there. So you really have to, as you say, to set it in the context of its time, it reads as bullshit. But a lot of people are buying this. Yeah, you know, and as I say, they're looking at your movie. Like, yeah. They were saying you, you were looking across the screen there, Adam, too, saying, I fancy a bit of that. Well, yeah, well, that <laughs> I, I was. I was looking at him wishing I was as fucking good an actor as All he right, was. All right, okay. Well, yeah, well, uh, that, that is the more serious level. How, how deeply did the Brando Dean uh, perception of acting and living, maybe, the whole lifestyle, shape you at that very impressionable age? Well, no, I was like totally like uh, Jane uh, uh, Montgomery. The same oh, thing I happened clipped. to me that happened to Dean. Dean was a little older than me. Right. I mean, I saw Brando act and I saw uh, Montgomery Cliff act, and that's what I wanted to do. Right? Why then? The kind of acting that I well, what was to their do. dynamic that was so different from Garfield or from the more the other guys? Well, Garfield was a bit like Cliff. What was they so weren't, different? They weren't as real. All right. They weren't as good. In, they just weren't as good an actors. They weren't as believable. All right. And. Um, so that fired you. Huh? That's what fired you, seeing Brando and Monk. Well, Cliff. I was already doing Shakespeare. I was old. my idols at that time were Orson Welles and oh, right. John Barrymore and these very broad, big, you know, kind of actors. What the that. Shakespearean acting, that kind of yeah, projection and all that. Yeah. And so when I was thirteen, I saw in one week I saw Marlon Brando in um, Man? Viva Zapata and oh, Zapata, right. and uh, I saw uh, Cliff in uh, Place in the Sun. All right. And that was it. Then I saw Streetcar. That's why I said and I, it took me a long time before I saw the men. I, right, I, I, right, I right. But uh, and then Dean had Dean's had the same idols. Yeah, yeah, Cliff, Cliff and Brandon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Joe Jackson here again. I thank you for listening to this edition of the Joe Jackson Interviews podcast. And don't forget, if you want to read my print interview with Dennis Hopper or any of my articles, check out my website, JoeJacksonInterviewer.com.